I'm Emily Moshak, and you're listening to Tuned In to NoCo, Town Square Media's show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm talking today with Claire Bouchard, the Vice President of Communications, Marketing, and Engagement at the United Way of Larimer County. And we're here to talk about the Larimer Fires Long-Term Recovery Group. So thank you so much for joining me, Claire. Thank you for having me, Emily. Of course. Now, before we get into the LTRG, I want to talk a little bit about you. How did you find your way to the United Way? Oh, well, thanks for asking. I've been in the um, Larimer County community for about 17 years, and I started my career um, with the city of Fort Collins doing communications, public relations, and marketing, and just kind of fell in love with public sector, um, public engagement, and community engagement. And I um, left the city in 2013. I started my own um, business with some business partners, uh, loved that for four years, worked all over the county and state doing public sector marketing and communications, and then um, found myself at United Way. And um, for the last several years, I've been doing engagement work, um, grant making, and um, relationship building with key partners. That is awesome. And now for those who are unfamiliar, what does the United Way of Larimer County do for Northern Colorado? You know, we really try to leverage philanthropy philanthropy, and um, people's generosity of time, talent, and treasure. And we really try to reduce today's um, greatest needs by providing time-sensitive grants and impact work. And then we also are looking at how do we reduce tomorrow's needs through systemic um, change and kind of higher level policy development and advocacy to not only help people today, but make sure they don't have those same problems tomorrow. And we do that through funding, through volunteerism, um, advocacy, and grant making. Mm -hmm. And now, obviously, one of the big needs of the Northern Colorado community is help with what happened last year with the Cameron Peak Fire and the East Troublesome Fire. So I want to get into the Larimer Fires Long-Term Recovery Group how did this group come to be and how can it help fire survivors? Yeah, so this is a group of agencies. There's about 30 in our long-term recovery group um, that are working in a very hyper-local way. So there are long-term recovery groups after every disaster, wherever you live in America. It's kind of like a FEMA um, best practice or disaster response best practice. And what happens is during blue sky days, when we don't have disasters, we have groups of agencies that participate in VOAD, which stands for Volunteer Organizations Assisting in Disasters. And those VOAD members um, respond to the disaster with the Office of Emergency Management at the county level and any firefighting or flood um, mitigation groups. And we um, put a call out to these agencies, and some are like Salvation Army, the Red Cross, Volunteers of America, United Way, um, Seventh-day Adventist Disaster Response folks, um, Serve 6.8 here in Loveland, and on and on. Um, and so we get together when there's a disaster, and we say, how are we going to help the community? We know that um, people are going to need help. People are not prepared for these things, especially with COVID and the fires that you know were the largest in our state's history. So the groups get together and we start talking about what are the needs going to be and how do we either fundraise, which we did this time with Larimer County um, United Way kind of taking the lead on that, or um, how about putting up volunteers or putting together volunteer opportunities, or um, how do we offer emotional support to people? So we work with the faith-based organizations and interfaith council on providing well-being and emotional care, among other things. Now, we all saw firsthand how the fires affected Northern Colorado, but what impact have you personally seen it have on the community through your work with the LTRG? Um, you know, a lot of really interesting stories, both, you know, sad stories like uh, families that lost their home and this, they were like legacy homes. They've been up in the foothills forever and now all of a sudden they find themselves without a home. And hearing those stories is kind of traumatic. You know, um, I've been on, I was on a hundred days worth of fire calls and I don't normally do disaster work. So between a COVID response and then having fire calls um, every day for three months was, was pretty tough. Um, but then we have really great stories too. Like we put out an opportunity to volunteers to come help us clean up um, crew campsites during the fires themselves. So we had um, different sites where the professional firefighters were staying and we needed volunteers to clean them. And we had a wait list 250 people long. Like we needed 10 people that day and we had 250 people wanting to volunteer. And 
to me, those are the kind of stories of what makes Larimer County so special and unique is like we want to chip, chip in, whether it's a disaster today or we're trying to recover three months later. Mm hmm. And you mentioned before that some of the people's needs are emotional support and cleanup. What other needs are you seeing from fire survivors right now? Yeah, um, so we've been helping folks that lost tools or equipment in the fire that need those to work. So we've been helping them get replacements. We had some folks that needed some medical equipment and supplies. We were able to help with that. We've helped with some short-term housing expenses that were unexpected because of the fire. Um, and then we have case managers that work with the survivors on rebuilding. So we um, primarily work with the people, people that had primary homes up in the burnt area, and many of them want to rebuild, and some of them are underinsured or uninsured. And so they're going to be relying on local philanthropy and community support. So we have about $1.2 million in a fund that's set aside for those families. And as they go through the rebuilding process, they work with their case manager and um, they come to us so that we can ensure that the vendor that they need to um, work with is getting paid for that, those supplies and equipment. How can fire survivors reach out to the LTRG? Yeah, so we have a web page off of the county's um, recovery site. Yeah, so there's a phone number, there's an email and a website people can go to. That is awesome. And now I know you're also looking for volunteers to help with community cleanup in the spring. What is that going to look like and what do people need to know? Great, great question. Those um, plans are being formed right now. I just got off a call about it. So we have um, distinct areas of the fire burn area that are higher risk than others of damage with floods or falling debris in case the soil loosens even more and starts um, you know, going downhill, which happens with gravity. Um, and so we have high risk of trees falling that are um, burnt but still standing. And if they are going to fall into roads or on buildings, we're going to need um, helpers to clear those. Um, we're going to have some training events where we're going to train supervisors so that they can take a group of volunteers up. We're going to ask folks that are um, trained to like cut down trees and stuff to be on certain teams. And then people that don't have that expertise will still need them to do things. And we'll be putting calls out for that kind of work here very soon once we understand more of what work has to happen up in the burn area. And we'll put together job descriptions, if you will, uh, or requirements or, um, you know, things that people might want to know if, if they're a good candidate and match. And if people want to sign up to help with the LTRG or even just United Way in general, can they go to the website again? Yeah, sure. Um, we actually have a whole volunteer platform called nocovolunteers.org. And that site has um, a place where you can sign up to have a profile and you can pick different categories of things that you're interested in um, volunteering at, whether it's pets or the environment, fires, um, children, um, all, all the things that we need help with our community to make it wonderful and resilient. And then you'll get notified when opportunities come up for categories that you've chosen. So if you've chosen fire, but there aren't any fire opportunities right now, have no fear. Um, we're creating those and those folks that have chosen that will get notified or you can just check the website or make a profile. That is awesome. Well, thank you, Claire, for talking to me today. It was so great to learn about this resource. Is there anything else you would like listeners to know? Uh, just really thank everyone for their generosity. You know, we um, come together in times of hardship here in Larimer County, and it really makes us one of the best places to work, work live, play, and learn. And, um, you know, but not everyone has a great day here. So we have to make sure that we're building a resilient community, that we have volunteers, that we have donors ready to go and help those in need. And we really appreciate being here in Larimer County. That is great. Well, thank you so much, Claire. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Emily. Again, that was Claire Bouchard, the Vice President of Communications, Marketing, and Engagement with the United Way of Larimer County. Learn more about the Larimer Fire's long-term recovery group at larimerrecovers.org slash larimer hyphen long hyphen term hyphen recovery hyphen group. Or sign up to volunteer in the Northern Colorado community at nocovolunteers.org.